but I was very fortunate. A kindergarten teacher in a beautiful, beautiful section of Philadelphia, the Girard Estate, where Stephen Girard built these homes for people that could afford to live there. The kindergarten teacher was in an automobile accident, and she was going to be out for the rest of the term, so I got a kindergarten job for the whole year. So I taught, but I met a Jewish woman, Mrs. Lieberman. She was head of special education. And she said to me, Blanche, you're wasting your time teaching kindergarten. Come into my extension department. Uh, Roosevelt is coming into president. He's going to give a lot of goodies to the people, but they must be citizens. And we had so many people who came from Italy, came from Czechoslovakia, came from all the other countries, and all they could do was make an X. They couldn't sign their name. Did you know any of those kind no. of people? Um, they they yes. didn't even know how to sign their name. <laughs> all they had to do was put an X. So she, she said, you come into my department. You speak Polish. You write Polish. You're at ease with Polish people. You'll be an asset to my department. So I transferred. But it wasn't an easy job. I love working with elderly people. But I had a class on Monday and Wednesday from 9 to 11 in one school. Then from 1 to 3 in another school. And then from 7 to 9 in a recreation center or a community center. And then on Tuesday and Thursday, I had another school, 9 to 11, and I didn't have an automobile. Everything was done by public transportation, but it was good. I learned Philadelphia. I learned how to get to Maniunk. I learned how to get to South Philadelphia. I learned all the different districts. It was and on then, trolleys, right? And then on Friday, I went to Temple University to take a course how to teach foreigners. <laughs> See, I was never prepared for that, but they needed someone, so they took me. So I, Friday, I went to Temple, and it was very, very rewarding. You would get this Italian man who came from Italy. He had never handled a fine pencil. He worked on the railroad with the pitch, a big instruments, and you would put this dainty pencil in his hand. God bless it, he could hardly manipulate it. So I would take this paper, the double bit that they use in first and second grade, and then I would write John in verso. And he would go over John in verso, John in verso. And then I would do it on the blackboard. And after about 10, 15, he would come down and he would learn to sign his name John in verso. And then I had to teach him the different departments of the government and the qualifications for president. Simple, simple history questions. Then the final day comes when we go down to the courthouse and they are sworn in as citizens. And right across from the courthouse is Gimbel's department store. You're not familiar. Gimbel's was a big, big store. And uh, so at random, they would ask questions. How old must you be to be president? And then the next one, they would ask him a question. After they got through with him, we're sworn in, and they get a little flag, and then we would march across the street to Gimbel's. And in their room on the eighth floor, they had a big dining room. They served a restaurant, but for that afternoon, it was closed to the public, and they would have fancy sandwiches. And can you imagine these men? holding on. They're used to a big club sandwich. And they would have something to drink. And uh, it was a very, very rewarding thing. And my Jewish ladies would slip me a $5 bill. My Italian ones would give me a package of Dago red Italian wine that went down the drain because I couldn't eat. <laughs> and my <coughs> Polish and Lithuanian 
I have more crochet doilies, crochet napkins, crocheted stuff. But it was very rewarding. And I taught that until 